Welcome to Projects for All. My name is Mike and this is Skills 2x20 Volt Circular Saw. This is going to be a little bit of a different review for this channel because this tool was sent here by the manufacturer for me to review for you. This is the very first time and I'm going to tell you because this is the first time. You've come to trust this channel for honest reviews. Anything I think is what you hear and that doesn't change with this. This tool I've never used and that's a rarity on this channel too because most of this stuff is mine or borrowed and well loved and well tested. But today we're going to rip this thing out of the box. We're going to dump it out, get you in here, have a look like we always do. And then we're going to cut a ton of wood. We're going to, we got two by 12s. We got four by fours. We're going to charge up the batteries and we're going to cut that stuff up like lunch meat. We're going to see how long these batteries last and just how good this thing really is. So I opened the box to this point to get the batteries out to charge them up so we can do this video on one shot. Ready to go. We got two 5 amp hour batteries. We got a seriously stout looking charger. It's pretty heavy and it's pretty noisy. When you plug the batteries in, and I'll show you at the end here when we kill these batteries, this thing's got some serious fans in it. So this is, I suspect, not the kind of tool that you would be charging up on your kitchen counter. But on the off chance that you like to charge stuff on your kitchen counter, it's pretty noisy. So I haven't been this deep in this box, and I haven't seen this thing yet. Woohoo, man. Got a blade in here. Come on, blade. Well, isn't that fancy looking? Big, heavy. Let's get in here and have a look. Power core 20, five amp times two. I charged these batteries before this video, so we get right to business. They came about half charged, UL listed, plastic, all plastic, of course, but no creaking noises, pretty solid, still no rubber over mold. I mean, it means less in this tool because, you know, the batteries go on the side, but eventually you're going to put this in a drill and no over mold makes them a little slipperier than I'd like when you set the drill down. But otherwise, that's all I have to say about that. We're going to see how long these things last. So we get a rafter hook right on top on a spring loaded detent. Pretty nice. Nice and big. We got two handles. This handle is the dust port, which is a pretty cool design. They pull the dust port from right up under here and then across to this side. So you got your cutting side and then the side with your hose, and hopefully they're not in each other's way. The only other thing in the box was a little adapter for your dust port. It just press fits. There you go. Get a little swivel. Inch and a quarter. I don't know if I have an adapter for this, but we'll check it out with the vacuum. You get a 24 tooth framing blade. Seven and a quarter, of course. Five eighths arbor. Got a little diagram, this side for blade left, this side for blade right. Pretty standard stuff, carbide tip. We're gonna find out if this is any good. I'm not gonna lie to you, first impression, this thing looks pretty nice. But we're gonna find out, you get metal parts, where all metal parts are needed. You got a long return spring inside here. Long return spring for your guard. Urethane, I'm assuming, bushing right here. Stops it going both ways. Some nice rubber over molding. Power switch. Feels good. Ambidextrous safety, of course. Get your battery ports. Takes 
two batteries. It ain't light, that's for sure. I mean, I can one hand it. I'm not crazy strong, but I wouldn't want to do that for a long time. I mean, it's pretty front heavy. Brushless, of course. You get your typical circ saw adjustment. Lever here, pop up, your shoe pops down. This is nice and smooth. It's hinged right here. And you get markings, you get quarter inch plywood, half inch plywood, three quarter inch plywood and times one lumber, two X lumber, three X lumber. Kind of takes the guesswork out of it. And it is smooth as butter. So you get your standard angle adjustment. Flip the lever over. This side, not smooth as butter, pretty stiff. But actually that's good because you can get your angle. You don't have to try and hold it in a funny way to get your angle and then flip this over, it just stays there. Black gauge in black material is not my favorite. My old eyes have trouble seeing stuff like this, but this is probably the best I've seen of that style. Way better than the Wen track saw because it's engraved pretty deep and you can see it. You go zero, of course to 53 degrees, you flip this over and smack it all the way out and you get 45. Oh, nope, I went past. So it has a stopper here that stops you at 45 degrees. But I've pulled this out and gone past 45 to 53 without pulling this back to allow that to happen. So there's 53, you gotta pull this out and pull it down and that thing's supposed to stop you. Eh, it sort of works. So there it stopped it. But if I go a little too hard, which you kind of have to do because this thing's stiff and it won't stop you, it'll go to 53. See, 53. If you're not paying attention, you think you're at 45, you're actually at 53 because this mechanism doesn't work very well. Yeah, I'm not even doing it hard anymore. It's just not stopping it. Stopped it, didn't stop it. Eh. I suppose you're supposed to be paying attention to what you're doing anyway, but that could have been a little better design. Your Arbor stop button is right here in the front. Also in the front, we'll see in a little bit, right down here is an LED light. So when you pull the trigger, obviously with the batteries in it, you get an LED light that shines out and helps illuminate your cut. 5 8 armor, reverse thread of course, nice and smooth in and out, got your washer, bolt, blade, lefty tighty, there's a wrench on the bottom here. You get 9 16 and half inch. Half inch is the little one. You also get a flathead screwdriver. So we'll press our arbor button. It says right on here, 1 eighth turn past finger tight to protect against kickback. So we'll pay attention to that. It's about an eighth of a turn. It's easier to see when I flip the shoe down here. And there's a little piece of spring steel right here that keeps it locked in there. You don't have to flip that shoe down to get it out. You can just pull it right out of there. So we got our blade installed. Man, that thing stops fast. Well, it sounds like it's got a lot of power. Let's get this dust port hooked up and we'll see how this thing does. So we got a four by four by 10 clamped to the table saw. And what we're gonna do, simply take as many slices out of it as we can with this thing. If we have to, we'll flip it over. I'll try and stagger them. We're gonna chop this thing up. 
Let's see how many cuts we can get before these two batteries die. Let's do it. So we got through an entire 10 foot 4x4 four four, and we got one bar missing from each battery. So let's start with the 2x12s. I got a lot of 2x12s sitting here. So our workspace is a little trashed, but not as bad considering, ooh man, I would say the dust collection works pretty good, that's a lot of sawdust. So I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't tired from doing this, it's a lot of work. What we ended up with was 184. 2x12s, which if we can agree is the equivalent of cutting three 2x4s, that's 552 cuts here. The 4x4 four four was full depth cuts through a treated green 4x4 four four, and that was 148 cuts. So 552 and 148 is 700 cuts on one charge that's impressive so i don't know if i really cut 
three two by fours instead of one two by 12. You know, you spin it up, you line it up, you do your cut. Maybe that spin up time would have equated to a few less cuts in the end, but I'm gonna call it 700 cuts and I'm impressed. Like, surprisingly impressed. The dust collection works absolutely amazing. It filled up the vacuum. I did, we checked it together. I didn't check it halfway through. I didn't know what was going on with that, but most of, I'd say 98% of the dust went into that vacuum, which is really impressive. This is how many times in my life I have hooked a dust collector to a circular saw. And actually, I looked at my two circular saws. They're both Milwaukee, one's corded, one's an M18, and they don't have dust ports on them. And I didn't even know that until this video when I went and looked. So not a huge priority for me. Most folks I think are gonna use this outside. If I do one or two cuts, I just need to chop something real fast. I'll do it in here and just put up with the dust. That's how I've always done it. But man, the dust collection is killer. And if you're going to do this for some reason, I recommend hooking it up to a vacuum because it works great. A couple little nitpicks. The dust elbow that attaches to the side is press fit. And I think three times, maybe two, I got the hose of the vacuum hooked on the end of the wood enough to pop it off. And I had to go grab it and press fit it back on. The tilt mechanism going past 45 degrees, even though it's not supposed to because it has this little lockout. <clears throat> I don't tilt the circular saw very often anyway. If you do, then you're going to want to watch out for that. But these are little nitpicks, man. Small nitpicks. Other than that, power for days. This thing didn't slow down. It had no trouble. It went through everything like butter. 700 cuts or so out of one charge. It's pretty comfortable to use. Put a little dent in my hand and you know, I had to stop. It took me, altogether, it took me about an hour to do this. 45 minutes to an hour to make all of these cuts. I stopped a few times because I was getting the old forearm twitch and you know, I had to go unload the groceries with the wife, but a couple little breaks. This thing never overheated. It never stopped, even though I was just hammering it. Never stopped, never overheated, never got warm. From the first cut to the last, we got clean cuts out of this blade that came with the saw. I don't usually get excited for blades that come with saws, but not bad. Framing blade, I was pushing this thing hard and clean cuts. No complaints. The two batteries charged in less than an hour. And it took me about an hour to do all this. You could run two, three guys on this saw with two sets of these batteries, one charging one in the saw, and never run out of batteries, no matter how hard you push this thing. It's absolutely incredible. We push this thing hard, and man, it paid off. Because this is an excellent, excellent circular saw. I couldn't be more impressed. This will be my regular circular saw until we find something better or something else to test, which hopefully will be soon. If you found this video useful, you had fun watching it, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. It very much helps out the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.